Santa, could I please have a drone for Christmas this year? And now that is not a crazy thought. You can actually buy one for around $500 plus tax, even, you know, just on the Plaza Saint Hubert. And, and those are the kind that you can do some pretty spectacular aerial shots with. Many have done them. And you see those drone videos of Montreal. There's one from Mount Royal up online pretty easily to find. Uh, so many people have drones nowadays that there are concerns about them falling from the sky. Two weeks ago, a drone owner put an ad out in Westmount asking if anyone had seen his missing drone. We're going to talk about the phenomenon right now with Jean Arache, who's Director of Research and Development over at the Quebec Centre for Aeronautical Training, CQFA, which is a CEJA based in Chicoutimi, but with a campus here in Montreal. Uh, and they do piloting courses. Jean Larache, morning to you. Thanks Good morning, for coming Mike. in. And Yves Auger is a drone hobbyist and has several drones. Uh, he's live as well with us. Uh, Yves, morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Uh, how possible? Popular. I mean, can you just give us an idea of what the phenomenon is right now? What's your sense of how popular it is? It, it really raised up since uh, quite a few years because uh, GPS-assisted uh, controller uh, helped people to f- learn to fly, you know, when you become an instant pilot. So before, you used to learn to pilot those things, but now they quite drive themselves and automatic, you know. I, I just started noticing them in the in in the park near to where I live, Jerry Park, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and you do start, and I mentioned this incident in Westmount where someone had lost the drone. So there are drones out there, and they're quite available to get. How difficult is it to find one that you could operate? Well, just three years ago, you have to build them yourself and find flight controllers, you know, and design things. Uh, but since then, they start to be sold uh, off the shelf, ready to fly. You buy them, like you say, uh, quite any, any electronic store have them right now, so it's quite easy. Um, Jean, what we have are some new rules from Transport Canada, uh, which is starting to realize that there is a concern here. What are the potential dangers, do you think, of the rise in popularity of drones in Montreal? Well, because they are remotely piloted, it requires radio frequencies between the uh, handheld uh, remote control and the UAV. And that uh, that works on the same frequency as a home and, and office Wi-Fi. You get a lot of interference. And right now we see an increasing number of flyaways. Uh, they, lose, they lose control of the drone, not necessarily because they're bad pilots. It's because their radio frequency is already in the city. So if the signal drops between your control unit and your drone, you called it a UAV, um, what happens to the drone? It's supposed to come back where it began, but the thing is if the signal is hijacked by a home Wi-Fi or a, a Wi-Fi on a Greyhound bus passing by, then it gets conflicting signal and we say it's returned to China. It's, it goes away, it flies away, you lose it. Uh, Eve, how often in your experience does that sort of thing happen? Well, flyaways, uh, it depends. On the net, you see stories, but some people didn't tell the story, so you know, we don't know it all. But uh, it might be 5%. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to put a number on that, do you, but it do does you know, happen. Do you, it does happen. Do you know of cases where it's happened here in, in Montreal? Uh, yeah, I heard a couple of cases, yeah, from Can the you, web. And what what do you know about them? What sort of things happen? Well, I, I was not involved. It's more, mostly, it becomes technical issues sometimes when you, you build them yourself and you put the wrong, like Jean say, the wrong frequency on video link or whatever. Could be technical mistakes or mostly. If, if they fall out of the sky, Jean, what is the danger? It depends on the weight. It depends uh, of the speed as well. Uh, the professional drones up to uh, 54 pounds, uh, 25 kilos, can have a, a, a serious impact on someone or on the individual pr- pr- property. Uh, we see those flyaways once in a while. Uh, we help those professional pilots to write the incident reports. And mostly, most of the case, it's related to the way the drones were built or operated. And, and there are spinning blades, of course, as well. Or is, is it that the problem or, or, or more? the weight? Well, it's the weight. It's the weight of the payload. If you have a 20-pound camera underneath, uh, it will hurt uh, quite a bit. It's enough to uh, to seriously injure someone. So the minister is trying to put regulations to build a space between the population and the flying drones to make sure that if there is an accident, then it's inconsequential. And Eve, you've just brought me a, a real kind of handy guide to what you're allowed to do or what you should do always and what you should not do if you have a drone. So this 
is from Transport Canada. Fly during daylight and in good weather. Uh, keep your aircraft in sight. Make sure it is safe before takeoff. Know if you need a permission and respect the privacy of others. Don't fly over private property uh, taking photos or videos without permission. Uh, and in terms of what you shouldn't do, um, closer than nine kilometers from an airport, don't do that, or a heliport or an aerodrome. Not higher than 90 meters. Not closer than 30 meters from people. Not in populated areas. It just seems to me reading through that, Jean, that, that if you were to follow Transport Canada's guidelines, there are not a lot of places in Montreal in the city where you should be flying a drone. Well, that's correct. If you have a mountain bike, you'll head for the mountains. If you have a drone for Christmas under the Christmas tree, you should head for the fields and not chase cows with them. But there's a lot of places you can fly them safely and away from other signals, away from airplanes, away from airports, so you can have a lot of fun with them. Do people uh, Eve, obey these guidelines in your experience? Um... Not necessarily all the time because they don't know them. Now it's really welcome those advice from Transport Canada because people didn't know. You cannot obey if you don't know. We need to inform them. That's the, the point right now. Jean, you teach piloting drones. We teach professional piloting drones, and it's a long, long course because uh, the equipment is more expensive, flies uh, farther, brings more payload, and costs a lot. You have drones well in the six figures, so we not only train them to protect the public, but to protect their assets as well. Is there a case for everyday people getting a license to be able to fly a drone before they fly it? No, the license does not exist. We're in a state of law. The minister uh, perhaps wishes to see a license in the future, but uh, she's not equipped to impose one right now. So the regulations and the guidelines are there to uh, build some safety uh, concerns, uh, safety spaces right now over the population. And the license will come probably through ICAO in some years. Do you think there should be such a thing as a, like the equivalent of a driver's license, but a drone flyer's license? Well, for two kilos and less and uh, good safety information, I think we'll be fine for uh, heavier equipment and uh, farther away from the line of sight. I think we will have to have a license pretty soon. And what about that idea, Eve? Uh, should there be a license for certain types of drones? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm flying with an association in Canada, MAC, Model Aeronautical uh, Association of Canada. And, um, well, we have guidelines. We have a course but right now they cannot join, they cannot reach all those new pilots. So we have something going on, but uh, we have to be in contact with that association. You wouldn't be opposed to the idea of a permit, or it depends? Well, for recreational, um, I don't know. Um, they, they need to train, they need to be inform, informed first. Um, and then we'll see. And then it depends. Uh, Jean Laroche, who is Director of Research and Development for the CQFA. Jean, thanks for coming in. Nice to meet you. And Yves Auger, who is a drone hobbyist and has several of them himself. Thank you both very much.